Hi, I'm going to be showing you how to crochet mats for the homeless out of Plarn. Plarn is yarn made out of recycled plastic bags. This is what a completed Plarn mat looks like, and I will be giving it to someone who is homeless. There are many benefits of Plarn mats, including that it saves plastic bags from ending up in landfills, it provides better cushion than regular blankets, they're great insulators, it doesn't attract bugs, it's very lightweight and great for transport. Although crinkly and not too soft, it is very comfortable to lay on compared to laying on hard concrete. You can also put this on grass or on damp concrete and you will not get wet. I really love this project because it has my three most favorite things. One, crocheting, obviously. Two, helping others. And three, saving the environment. I fell in love with this project a while back and was hoping to collect unwanted plastic bags from Facebook friends but unfortunately we didn't receive as much as I hoped. Then my mom suggested the box at Winco where people put their unwanted plastic bags. I asked if I could take some of those and Winco actually gave me a bunch of bags that they were going to throw out anyways. I'll include a picture here. With all of those plastic bags, I have enough to make 44 of these six foot long and 2.5 feet wide mats. I prefer to use all of these Winco bags uh, for the large mats because they're just all the same and easier to cut, but I do make sitting mats out of the bags that we get from friends or that we just happen to have. This is a sleeping mat that's six feet long and about 2.5 feet wide. But this is a sitting mat that is about two feet wide and it will be three feet long. As you can see, these are a bit of a different texture because of all of the different bags combined together. It's super easy to make the plarn, and actually all of the plarn in the large sleeping mat that I just showed you was made by my amazing group at school called ARC, which is Acts of Random Kindness Club. They made all the plarn and I did all the crocheting, and with that mat it took about four hours of crocheting. You can use bags of any size or shape to make plarn. You can even use produce bags. However, you do not want to make plarn out of bags like these because they are quite thick and do not work very well. You can see here in the middle how it's not squishy at all and it's just really hard. The cutting process is gonna be a little bit different depending on the size of your bags so I'll just show you on some perfectly flattened bags. So first, you're going to lay out your bags. Then you're going to fold in half like this. Then you're going to fold in half again. Then you will cut off right here at the bottom, just a little bit, just enough so that all of these um, are gone. So that's all. And then you can just throw that away because there's no use for that. And you're going to do the same thing to the handles. So about right here, as close as you can get it, you can cut that off and throw it away. You flatten it out again and you're going to cut in the middle. Then you're going to cut in the middle of this. and in the middle of this. Then you separate these and you can lay them flat. Of course, they're not perfect, but that's perfectly fine. Before I show you how to assemble the plarn, I'm going to show you how to make these cuttings on different, more difficult bags. So if you grab some average size bags, about four, you're going to want to flatten them out the best you can. I found that if I kind of get some air in there, and then if I hold onto the handle here and then stick my finger in here and then pull tight, and then do that to the other side, and then kind of go like that, and that works the best. And you're gonna do this to four of them. Now that we have about four of them laid out, we're gonna do the exact same thing. So we're gonna fold in half, and then fold in half again, which is just e making it easier to make straight cuts. 
and then you're gonna cut that off and then uh, about there these go in the trash and you do the same cuts on these cut them into fours they're just not as pretty as the flattened ones so there's that with funky bags like this it's a little bit more difficult to figure out what size you should make your strips but with working with them for a while you'll get used to it and figure it out okay so i have this one flattened out and i'm going to fold in half and fold in half again and i'm still going to make my strips about this wide because it's basically the same material so just make you make sure you cut off your ends and then where the handles are on this one we might be able to do something special and actually keep part of the handle so we can keep this and throw this away and then since there's a hole right there i'm gonna go about here because it'll be fine and about right there maybe three more and then you'll do the same thing for assembling your plarn for a subway bag like this you're still gonna fold it and you i guess you can fold it again and then I would cut about that off and then basically make the same width for this one too. They're just gonna be thinner strips. Grocery bags are a little bit more difficult to work with, but they still work fine. So basically, if we're just gonna try to flatten them out the best we can first. So this is as best as I could get it. And I can see that these, these ends where they're attached come all the way out here so I'm gonna wanna cut all of that off, but first I'm gonna just fold it a little bit just for straighter lines. And you can see that here is where it all is attached. So I'm just gonna cut all of that off. And since it's a much thinner material, we're probably only gonna make two cuts. All right. And now we can assemble these all the same way. So you can see that I just kind of unfolded these to make it easier to grab them. Now I'm gonna show you how to assemble with a brown bag or well, with a brown loop and a white loop just to make it easier for you to see. What you're gonna do is you're going to put this loop over this one and you're going to snap that kind of closed about in the middle of here then you're going to put one side through this side pull this side down that's just what i found is easier and then pull this back here and pull tight not too tight because you don't want to rip it but that works i remember doing this exact same thing with hair ties so i'll kind of show you again you just put one side through the other and then they're attached so now you have these two attached and you're gonna continue doing that. So I'll actually show you on this side. I like to put my arm through here, grab one of these, shimmy it about halfway, close it shut, put one side through the other, go like that, and then pull this tight. And you're going to keep doing that. So I'll show you again. I put my arm through here, I grab onto one of these, do one of those, put one side through the other side, hold that down, and then pull tight. And as you're making your plarn, it's very easy to put it in one of these bags that you can't use. So I like to push it in one of these as I'm working. And once I'm done, it's good to tie it to the handle of a bag just so then you can find your yarn. Now imagine if this bag is full and you left this end off and started another piece, what you can do is you can take this 
and actually pull it through your entire whole bag of yarn. And then they're connected. As a quick tip, you definitely don't want to roll your plarn into a ball because you're trying to keep it as fluffy as possible. So what you can do, instead of pushing it in a plastic bag, if you happen to have a box, this works great because you can just kind of set it in there as you're making it and then you can pull it out and, it, and you don't have to squish it down. Or you can get something like this to lay on the ground because you don't want to be putting your plarn on the floor because it will attract hair and the hair will cling to it. So you can either make a pile just right here or in a box, but you just want to stay clear of squishing it down. This is just a box that we had from moving stuff. And this is a lid to a little storage container and it works amazing. Also about the hair thing, if you are making plarn and you do have long hair, it is best to put your hair in a ponytail just to get it out of the way and make sure that it doesn't fall into your plarn and then you weave it in because then it just kind of gets a little bit weird. So hair ties are good for this. <laughs> this is the sitting mat that I'm working on and I just want to show you real quick, just in case if you missed it, how to attach more plarn once you're done with your working plarn. So again, I'm going to do the same thing and I can either go throughout my whole project, which is not ideally, but you're going to grab this extra and then you're going to put it through the whole bag or put the bag through it <laughs> and then pull tight. And then you have more working plarn. Now, just because it's easier, I'm going to be showing you how to start your mat by using all the plarn from the same Winco bags that my friends made me. So you're gonna want a, I believe this is an 11 millimeter hook, and this is probably like 15. I would recommend using something like this, but if you can't find something that big, this also works. Depending on the size mat that you're making is going to determine how long your starting chain is. If you're making a sleeping mat, I make it six feet by about 2.5 feet. That way they can rest their full body on it. But I also make a sitting mat, which is three feet by two feet, which will cover their head to their tailbone, but they can also roll it up and use it as a pillow or they can fold it and sit on it. I'm going to be making a sleeping mat so it's going to go to about 30 inches, and then you're gonna do one more chain. So I'll show you how to start. So what I like to do is you put your fingers in here, you turn them, and then you pull them together. That way you already have a loop. And then you're going to insert your hook. You're gonna make really loose chains. So like super duper loose. And then you're gonna do this until you get to your desired width. So I chain to my desired width, and then I'm going to just add one more as a turning chain. Then I'm going to go into the second loop from the hook, insert my hook, and be really gentle right here. Do not like pull super tight. You want it to be fluffy. So you're just barely holding it. And you're gonna pull it in yarn over, and I'm just doing single crochet, but half double crochet might be nice. And then you're going to continue doing that, being super duper gentle and soft. <laughs> With, oh, see sometimes that happens too. You only catch one side of it. That's fine. Just take it out, try again. Super duper gentle. I'm gonna pull this right here, and you're going to work that all along till here. All right, so I'm basically at the end. So I'm gonna continue doing this very gently, and then go into our last loop, or our last chain, actually. There we go. And then, of course, we've gotta make a turning chain. And then we're going to flip this over, then in the second chain, 
from hook, well, second stitch. So you're going to do this same thing over and over again, and you're going to complete your rows until you have it the length that you want. So I'm gonna do this until it's about six feet long. All right, so I worked all of those rounds for about six feet, and I'm gonna show you what to do once we're done. So I'm gonna do this last stitch, and go through there, and then we're actually going to put a loop on just to close it off. And just to make it easier, I'm just gonna cut this off that way we don't have to deal with it. So then that's the end. And then we'll just take this off. You can throw that away. Now I found that it's easier to get a smaller hook to do this next part. So we're going to pull this all the way through, pull it tight, and then we're going to try to feed this back kind of through here like that just to tuck it in. So I'm going to go through these loops, pull that, just doing the best I can. It doesn't matter that much because it shouldn't come undone, but just to make it nice. So I'm going to continue doing this and just pulling it through here, or if you just want to weave it like in and out of this you can so I'm gonna finish that all right so we're just tucking it in until we can't no more so try and get this through here put that loop on there and then pull tight a little bit and you can see how it's running through here so we're done with the mat yay now time for the handle you're gonna want to make some more strips but don't um, assemble them just yet this time we're actually going to double up on loops. So we've got one loop, but we're actually going to make that two just so that it's a bit stronger. And one, and then two. Same that through there. All right, and then we're going to do that again. We're going to do this for a little bit, just so we get a good long strand. Okay, so I've got about nine doubled up loops, and we're just going to see how far that gets us. So I am going to start, and we're going to make a chain for as long as it is around your rolled up mat. So I'm just going to make a chain and I'll come back. All right, so I counted about 18 chains and now we're gonna see if it fits around here. It looks like we're gonna need just a few more chains. It is a little bit hard to do this part since they're all doubled up and everything. So I'll just do three, see if that's any better. Perfect. So now it's kind of hard to explain because I just, kind of do whatever when I, when I make these, just whatever I feel like. So I'm going to try this. So I'm going to pull this out of here. So I pulled it out and then I'm going to actually pull it through our first little loop. There we go. And now I need to add some more on, but now we're going to make the strap. All right, I'm back with a bunch more doubled up florin, so we can continue. So you're gonna wanna pull it tight a little bit, and then this is what I like to do, so turn your fingers this way, like that. So you just made a little loop, and then you're gonna pull here. And then basically, you just started another stitch. So now we're going to make a handle that they can put like on their back, kind of. So 
So we're going to chain until we get to about here, plus some extra slack. So I'll come back. All right, so as you can see, it goes from here to there with just a little bit of slack. You don't want too much slack because then it'll be super droopy and kind of hard to carry. But this is the point where I like to kind of stick something in here just so I know about where, um, where I'm done with this strap. Because now we're going to work around here again. So then from here, you're going to uh, chain around until you meet back up here. All right, so now that it fits snug around here, we're going to single crochet right into there. There we go. And now we're going to slip stitch along here until we run out of plarn. So I'm gonna slip stitch into here. And then I just pull my loop over, that's just easier. until you run out of plarn. All right, so I was actually able to slip stitch all along this. I'm just finishing. So once we do that last slip stitch, we're just going to pull through and then pull tight. And then I just tuck this into here like a little coil. So I'm actually gonna use a smaller hook just cause it's easier. We're just gonna spin it around just so that it's a little bit more tucked in. Maybe we'll have to spin it around this side. Maybe just one last one. All right, and now we're done. So once you finish your mat, you're probably going to want to wash your hands, especially if it was, if you were working with bags that were donated to you, but it's also probably good to wash your hands after making it, even if they're from a store. Now that my mat is complete, I'm going to give it to a lady that I know who works with the homeless. I hope this video was helpful and that you might do this project too. Bye!